first, I'd like to thank the Hall of Fame committee for this honor and my family for putting up with me and my cars for all these years. So how did I get here? Well, as a kid from a small town in Connecticut, watching the cars in the 50s go by with all the chrome and the colors and the fins and everything, and with Elvis playing on the radio, I got interested in cars. I learned to drive on the back roads around my neighborhood, and you think drifting is new? You ought to see a 15-year-old in a 1947 Studebaker on a dirt road in the snow, just mo looking out the side windows, driving those things. So one day, my dad, who was a football coach, took a magazine away from uh, one of his students because he was supposed to be playing football. He brought it home and he threw it on the kitchen table. It was Hot Rod Magazine and it changed my life. And thanks to Mr. Peterson, the Hall of Fame member, seeing what was happening in California with Hot Rods is what I really wanted to do. Dra drawing Hot Rods and cruising the beach with a hot chick would be my goal. <laughs> there wasn't a chance in hell that that was ever gonna happen. <laughs> so I got to high school. High school was boring. My best class was the math class because the paper didn't have lines on it and I could draw cars on it. But I had a leather jacket with my collar turned up and I had the name on the back and I had the DA haircut, so everything was going along pretty cool. After school, I got a job at Pratt & Whitney Aircraft uh, doing aircraft experimental uh, engines. Just think you probably flew on a plane that had one of my engines on it. <laughs> Good luck with that. So, it was the first time anybody ever judged me with using my hands instead of how many, eight times seven or whatever that number is. So, I, I spent my time with the money I got from Pratt & Whitney building hot rods. Magazine, hot rod magazine in one hand and a wrench in the other. My first car was a 36 Ford high boy with a Hemi engine, six carburetors. The carburetors were tall in the windshield. Gas was 25 miles per, 25 dollars, 25 cents a piece and it got five miles per gallon. The money didn't bother me, but trying to find a gas station in the middle of the night was a little tough. So one day I looked around and there was an old guy next to me. He was 30 years old and he was doing the same thing I was doing. So I said, you know, I'm not gonna do this the rest of my life. It's time for a change. Again, a magazine saved me. I looked in a magazine and there was an article there about how to draw cars. And if you filled out this form, you could go to a art center in Los Angeles. So I, put a portfolio together of some of my chicken scratches of cars that I drew from my buddies and I sent it to Los Angeles and I got accepted. What a, sh boy, uh, it was such a surprise. But Art Center was tough. I mean, really, we were up many nights drawing all the cars and perspectives and the colors and everything. But you just ask the designers that are here tonight that went there, it was really rewarding. Um, you can, but you can't live in LA without a car. So in my first, by the second year, I had to get a ways of transportation. I got a Honda 90 motorcycle. I could cruise around LA up through Hollywood and ride around and everything. The only trouble is I needed more power. So I traded it for a 30 Model A Ford with a flathead engine. Thank you, Mr. Ford. It took me everywhere around Los Angeles. It was a fun car, cruising Sunset Boulevard and drive-ins and the beaches and everything. Three straight years, I finally got out, graduated. About six of us graduated, and we went, we were accepted. I was accepted at Ford and Dearborn and became my dream job. I finally was a car designer. But being a rookie, your job was mostly grills, door handles, shaker, hood scoop. I made, I made some into the 68, 69 Mustangs, and I still see them once in a while on the road. The job was great, but the parties were excellent. I'm 25 years old, I got paychecks laying on my desk, you know, and I'm driving a Corvette. The parties lasted long into the night. And at one party, I met a hot chick and we started dating. Come to find out she worked at the design center way down the end of this hall. So I would roll pennies off down the hall all the way into her office when she was taking notes. She told me later she should have waited for a guy that spent quarters down the hall. So it was the um, muscle car era, so I got a split window Corvette. I turned it into a street racer, cut the wheel wells out, put big tires on it, side pipes, you know, it was a killer car. Woodward Avenue was my hangout. Used to go down there, cruise Woodward Avenue. I crashed it a few times. It kept getting it better and better, making it cooler. Two years into the, the 
two years in and the weather was getting to me. You can't drive a hot rod in the winter. I heard the mamas and papas sing California Dreamin'. That was it, I had to get back to California. I heard of a job in California and I applied. I, I, I was working at, uh, uh, a month later, on New Year's Eve, I got married. A week later, I jumped in my Corvette and took off to go in cross country. That's another story. Got a job at Lockheed Aircraft doing the interiors of the newest plane, the uh, L-1011. It was really an advanced interior design. It was great. Then one day I got a call from a from a X Ford designer. He invited me to a party. Uh, I got a theme going here. When I showed up, I saw his kids playing with these little cars in this orange track that spun around and everything. And he said he was the Hot Wheels designer. I said, "Oh man, that's cool." But he said, "I don't want to draw Hot Wheels anymore. I want to be a space designer. I work with Matt Mason and that kind of stuff." So I told him, "Yeah, I can draw cars too. I can find a real job." So he said, come on in, and we got an interview, and I got, uh, got the job. Now, Ford was a serious place. You had to wear a tie, you had to wear a three-piece suit and a jacket and everything. I walked into Mattel, paisley shirts, bell bottoms, long hair, crazy people, and Barbie was the queen. Most of the designers were women, and they all thought they were Barbie. Mini skirts, pink, everywhere, hairdos, high heels, sneakers, the, and the executives were on their floors and their hands and knees were playing with Barbie and Hot Wheels. I said, oh, this is my kind of place. <laughs> then I was told I had to draw a car. I had to have it done in a week. I've been working for months on grills. So I, I said, what am I gonna do? I said, Fine, I'm gonna draw a sports car, of course. I've always wanted to draw a sports car. So I drew a sports car with three turbine engines in it, in the back. There were. That place was so much fun. They called it the funny farm. There, everybody was playing jokes on everybody and everything. I was the Hot Wheels designer there by myself for 20 years. And Hot Wheels was kind of being out there for a while. The sales were dropping off. I sat in meetings where they were gonna drop it and I kept fighting for it. Just give us one more year, give us one more year. Well, when the kids that played with Hot Wheels got old enough, 20 years older, and they started buying toys for their kids and themselves, they started to, Keep them, and then they started to, there were other people that were buying the cars for a collection all of a sudden. There were, so we had to hire more designers, and, and pretty soon there were Hot Wheel conventions, and, and everybody was just, the, the sales went crazy. We had more marketing people, and there was, uh, like I say, a lot more designers. A quick story, um, it was a lot of fun stuff, but I designed a tow truck, and I thought, you know, it'd be like a business card, so I put my home phone number on it. Well, I forgot we made thousands of cars a week. We, stu we started getting phone calls. First one was New Year's Eve. Little kids calling up saying, hey, Larry's towing service. <laughs> well, I didn't put an area code on it, so all over the United States, people were getting phone calls. So Mattel told me, you gotta take that number off. So I took the number off. And if you've got one of those cars, it's my, still my home phone number, and it's a rare piece. So. Uh, <laughs> Collectors are still looking for it. <laughs> Mattel is now making 10 million cars a week. Did I ever think I'd see that? And there's the same price as 1968. Can't say that about many things. So I retired after 50 years. It started to become computers taking over. I'm a pencil and paper guy. And the designers that are here now are the guys that took it over and they really have done fantastic. Now I spend my time at the shop real, with real cars. I'm building a car, hot rod with my daughter and I'm building a car, hot rod with my son, listening to the blues. I cruise the beach with my hot chick about a, two times a week. And I hope the millions of kids that played with Hot Wheels grew up with, as car nuts and made it into their job or hobby. I'd like to... Uh, Give this award to my English teacher, Miss Trinkus, who said, Larry, you'll never get anywhere drawing cars. <laughs> and one more thing. Mattel has a Hot Wheel for everybody leaving tonight. And um, I understand that uh, Mary might give everybody a Corvette, too. So that's what I'm <laughs> If she comes up, she can do that. Thank you, everybody.